Hello everybody! Welcome to another Valheim video. Today we're going to be learning about raids and everything that causes the different raids to happen. We'll be killing these bosses and you'll see how that changes the different raids that can show up. For all of the events to happen, you have to be near a base. The game determines a base by the presence of certain items. First we have an artisan table, a bed, black forge, blast furnace, bonfire, campfire, kiln, dragon bed, refinery, fermenter, forge, mage table, then a hanging brazier, hearth, portal, sconce, smelter, spinning wheel, all other forms of light except the wisp light, stone cutter, stone oven, ward, windmill, and workbench. These items also have some other effects. Monsters will not spawn within 20 meters of these, even during an event. Monsters will attack and try and destroy these items on site, except for the campfire, the bonfire, the hanging brazier, and the standing brazier. If you're there, then they're going to attack you instead of going to destroy the item. But the moment they can't get to you, they'll start destroying your stuff. You're only eligible for the events that match the progress of your server. The server saves keys that determine which events are available. So I'll show you all of the monsters that trigger a key on the server, because it's not just bosses, there's actually a couple monsters as well. We have the first boss, Yichthyr, Motor, the Queen, Bone Mass, the Elder, Yugluth, and then we have a Sirtling, a Troll, and some Bats. When you first start the game, and you're in your base, you'll only be eligible for one event. But how often does the game check? Well, every 46 minutes, the game rolls a five-sided dice. Basically, it's a 20% chance every 46 minutes. As you progress, some raids become impossible. In the beginning of the game, you'll get the Ether Rallies the Creatures of the Forest event. Aha, here we are, we have a boar neck. It's really an underwhelming event. See, here's another neck. So to unlock the second event, you'll need to kill Ether. Conveniently trapped in this cage, and we can just dispatch him real quick. Whoa! Motor! After killing Ether, you'll unlock the Forest is Moving event. The Forest is Moving event will throw all of the different Grey Dwarfs at you. So you'll get Grey Dwarf Shamans, Grey Dwarfs, and Greylings and you'll also get Grey Dwarf Brutes. All of the events last for close to two minutes. Each event has a different length. Some of them are like 90 seconds, others are like are two minutes. Now that we've killed Ether, the Elder, and one troll, we're eligible for one of the scarier events in the game. However, keep in mind that every time you progress, you're also losing an event. Here it is. When you get the ground of shaking, you really have to be careful because uh, trolls will just start running towards your base. You might actually not want to kill them. We killed these ones and then boom, look at that. Another one's already coming. So you're basically always gonna have two trolls coming at your base. So your best bet when this happens is actually to just leave your base and run around until the timer goes away. You, you need to protect your base by leaving it because otherwise this guy is gonna come in and he's gonna say hello. <laughs> Luckily, the foul smell from the swamp is easier than trolls because in this one, you'll just get attacked by a bunch of Draugr and skeletons. So the enemy is, if an enemy from a different biome comes in, like these Draugr and skeletons here, the enemies from this biome will actually fight them, which is pretty cool. Here we are, he's got a lot of friends here, so let's clear these guys up. Oof, how chaotic. <laughs> now I can just shoot him through this doorway. There we go, as soon as we've killed him. Oh! <laughs> As soon as we kill Bone Mass, we really open up a can of worms because the game gets a lot more violent. At this point, the rules sort of change because now you can get an event when you're not near your player base. And this event is the gnarliest of all of them. 
a bunch of wolves are gonna show up and try and kill you. This event can only happen in the mountains or the plains. So really, if you're there, you're asking for trouble anyway. This is the hardest event. It's the most likely event to kill you. Because by the time you get the Mistlands events, I mean, you're gonna be fine. Now that Bone Mass is dead, there's actually quite a few events, including the Skeleton Surprise. It just throws a bunch of skeletons at you, and occasionally, you'll see a very, very special enemy called Rancid Remains, which is, in my opinion, one of the rarest enemies in the game. You only find them in crypts and in the Skeleton Surprise event. Another event you're now eligible for is a really scary one, A Cold Wind Blows from the Mountains. In this one, you'll actually get the cold effect. Uh, I don't have it right now because I turned effects off just because of what was happening earlier with the bosses in Euglith. But normally this is a big problem because you'll actually freeze unless you're around a fireplace and these drakes fly. So they'll come down onto your base from far away and attack you and they'll have a much higher success rate than the animals from the other events because these guys can just go above your base and shoot you. See? Now, the fourth one that you get when you unlock bone mass is a foul smell from the swamp. And this one's pretty simple. You just get mobbed by these blobs and then occasionally oozes. This event is unique because these enemies can't actually hurt buildings. So if you just shut your door, they can't do anything to you aside from poison you through the walls. So. Just stay away from the w He just jumped in the tree, that was really funny. <laughs> stay away from the walls and you'll be good. Now, the real insanity here is that there's actually six possible events after you kill Bone Mass, because if you kill Bone Mass and someone has killed a bat, God forbid, your game's ruined now. All your boar are dead, <laughs> is this Sirtling. Once you kill one Sirtling, then you unlock another event. Killing Bone Mass and that Sirtling unlocked the smell of sulfur in the air. There's just gonna be a bunch of Sirtlings and they're gonna spawn. And if they see you, they'll throw fire at you. Once you kill the bat and Bone Mass, then you become eligible for the You Stirred the Cauldron event. And in this case, you're just gonna get mobbed by loads and loads and loads of bats. There's nothing else here. These oozes are actually just from the previous event. They, they don't matter. All you get is a bunch of bats. And there's tons. As you kill them, more come. And they can be a huge problem, because like the drakes, they'll kill your animals unless you have a roof over them. Uh, these other monsters are here because of previous events. And you can see that the skeletons actually try and shoot the bats, which is pretty funny. Oh, they hit them! Wow! Man, these things are better with a bow than I am. <laughs> Next, we'll have to come over here and kill Motor. Once you take out Motor, you unlock a whole bunch of crafting stuff, but it doesn't really change too much about the events. You'll get attacked by Goblin. Like, Really, a bunch of goblin. And what's even crazier is it's not just like some fuelings, it's also goblin berserkers, which are basically troll. You go troll, you got my back, man. Wow. I thought fueling berserkers were way stronger than trolls, but apparently I don't know what I'm talking about because uh, they look pretty equal. Oh, and he also had fuelings attacking him. Hmm. Let's see, we'll kill this brute. And then as soon as the brute's dead, he should theoretically just come back. And a new shaman should just come back. Yep, there we go. Even though the event ended, you can see that there's a new brute, or a berserker. And then there's that shaman off in the distance. So as you kill them, it's just going to keep respawning the ones that you kill. Once you kill Yuglith, uh, it gets a bit more intense, because now you can have a Mistlands event. There's actually two Mistlands events, so we'll have to go somewhere else, because it can't even occur in the meadows. If your base is in the Black Forest, though, eh, you're not gonna be so lucky. These guys are gonna get you. 
Now, luckily, the Seekers are aggressive with Black Forest mobs. The Seekers are really, really strong, and you might actually just need to go outside of your base and then just, like, die uh, when you first get this event, if that happens, because they're really destructive. Now, the last and final event actually isn't that common at all, and it's the What's Up Jal event. This one's pretty crazy, because Jal are really, really strong monsters, but it's not something you really see, because in order to see this event, you have to build a base in the Mistlands. It looks like they don't really spawn above the water, so you have to have a base like in the Mistlands for the event to work properly. Now, we could kill the Queen, but we'll have to just wait till the Ashlands comes out. There's actually a common misconception. Uh, people think that the keys for your server happen when you turn in the trophy to these sort of statues in the beginning of the world. But that's not actually true. They happen the moment that the enemy gets killed. The turning in the head thing, all that does is allow you to get the boss power. Thanks for watching everybody! This video was a blast to make. And if you want to check out any of my other content, I've got a bunch of Valheim videos. They're really fun. Also, consider getting a dedicated server. It's a great way for you to play Valheim with your friends. I find playing on a dedicated server much more immersive just because, you know, other people can do stuff on the server. And it's way more interesting because I can play Valheim all the time because I make videos for you guys. But normally, you know, and I'm sure this happens to you, you'll get bored. Like, if you just play through, you'll get to a point where it's really interesting, but then you kind of figure out the patterns. You know exactly what's going to happen and just stop playing. And then after you take a break, you know, you can get into a dedicated server or something else that really, like, adds a lot of depth to the game. And for me, making these videos has allowed me to just keep playing Valheim, and I have a blast. I really enjoy it. It really funnels your creativity, and it's a beautiful game. You can play it a lot and have a good life. Whereas World of Warcraft, when I played that a lot, I was just addicted. I wasn't building skills, you know? Valheim's creative. It's beautiful. I respect Iron Gate in a way I don't really respect any other game developer. So thanks for watching. And if you want to see more of these content, I guess subscribe to the channel, comment below, do what you want. Love you guys. Bye.